Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me once again. Today, as we are doing this revival week, what a blessing, man. People are getting blessed. The feedback is overwhelming. And what a joy, just know that you are being blessed, you are being encouraged, and you are being transformed by the teachings we are releasing on these platforms. If you are joining us on YouTube, please remember, remember always, if you have not subscribed, subscribe to this channel because we have a lot in store for you. If you're watching us on Facebook, like this page and share the broadcast as well. And God bless you. If you're watching us on TV, God bless you. It's always a blessing to come to you live and be a blessing. If you're watching us on Fab TV and whichever platform it is, may the Lord bless you and touch you tremendously. Today I'm joined by my other son. Uh, he's our deacon as well in church. He will introduce himself. Praise God, praise Jesus. My name is Nicole Fantas Goody. I'm born again. Christ is my personal savior. We will invite you today to fellowship with you and, uh, as we discuss this important topic of revival. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We looked at a number of things yesterday. I won't go back there, please. If you missed, watch the previous episode. And then you'll be able to learn after you've reached. We are still now defining a revival with a biblical perspective. Deacon the Fantas, do you really think that revival is needed in the church today? Yes, revival is needed, man of God, because at the times we are living in, even the Bible talks to us. In the book of John 10:10, 10, 10, that the devil comes to kill, to destroy, mm. and to steal, and to steal. Mm. Therefore, as believers, we should be aware of these times that we're living in, because it is very critical mm. for us to, for believers, in these end times, to position themselves in the way that they should be like Christ, mm. and the fire should continue burning. It should, never, it, should, it should never go off. Right. Yes. The fire must be kept burning. It should never go off. I love that statement. The fire should be kept Meaning that uh, the fire that our fathers ignited should be kept burning. The fire that the apostles ignited should be kept burning. Yes. It should never go off whatsoever. True. So we're going to look at, uh, we looked at a number of definitions earlier on, but we're continuing with the definition, biblical definitions of revival. We're going to look at Psalms chapter 32, verse number 1 and 2. Uh, we may read that for us. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Verse 2. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputed not iniquity, mm. and in whose spirit there is no guilt. Yes. Amen. So revival, we can define this as the restoration of the backslider. True. Mm. When God restores that one who was backslidden, yes. when God restores, when God brings them back, remember revival is about restoration. And you're talking about why revival turns. So until these people are restored, we can't enjoy the revival. True. You don't want your, your spouse to be revived and your, your children are not revived. We have all to be there. So in Asimakwamba, blessed is the one whose sins have been forgiven. And whose soul is restored unto God. In First Thessalonians chapter five, verse number seventeen, the Bible says, "Pray without ceasing." So prayer, I mean, revival also can be defined as when one's prayer altar is constantly burning with the Holy Ghost fire, which the Confanta spoke about. He says the fire must be kept burning. True. So that's a revival actually. Pray without ceasing. Jesus said, "Men ought always to pray, and not to faint." To faint. Yeah. So that's, that's a systematic way of ensuring that the wave of revival, the fire of revival is continually hitting our lives. And we pray that as you're watching, may the fire of revival be ignited in your life. May your dead prayer life come back to life. Amen. May your zeal for God's word come back to life. Amen. May your prayers that were fiery those days, may they come back in the name of Jesus. Amen. And as you're speaking about this, when you identify there's a point where you feel, you feel 
umedunda kidogo. Ambia Mungu tumsaidie hapo. Hiyo ni yangu. That is mine. That is mine. God help me there. So you're looking at also revival uh, is when saints begin to have a true passion for the lost and the perishing souls. Acts chapter 8 verse number 4. Acts chapter 8 verse number 4. Let us go there. Acts chapter 8. Before Acts chapter number 8. Mm-hmm. May I add something? Mm, before before we go to the book of Acts, mm-hmm. I'd just like to add a point on being revived. Mm-hmm. The restoration is, we can say that it is the restoration of God's presence mm-hmm. upon his people. Mm-hmm. Even upon, we see in the book of Exodus chapter 33, mm-hmm. when God said that, I'll go before you with a pillar of clouds yes, yes. and a and behind you with a pillar of fire. Yes. And we can even see this in the, we can say it is a heartfelt mm. return to God mm. and His commandments. Wow. We can see this in the book of Second Chronicles mm-hmm. 7, 14. Mm-hmm. I'm going to read that for you. Yes. Mm-hmm. Second Chronicles chapter 7. The children of Israel were being told that mm. my people, if my people, which are called by my name, yes. shall humble themselves and, and turn away from their wicked ways yes. and pray, I will hear them from heaven and heal their land. True. Mm. It was a point where they felt that the presence of God is no longer with them. Mm. Mm. And they saw it as a turnaround point mm. to amend their ways so that the presence of God may go with them mm. and God may lead them and help them conquer because this is of the beginning of the journey yes. after being taken out of captivity mm-hmm. now they had to align themselves yes. if they were not to align themselves they will find it hard mm. because they are in, in the wilderness right, right. you know what the wilderness have mm. they have they, were, they had their enemies yes. they had wild animals mm-hmm. and they had to purposely prepare their hearts mm. and set their hearts, their hearts on fire mm. for God. God. Right. Yes. Right. Yes. Wow, that's powerful. That's powerful. That's a very powerful point right there. I believe someone is noting them down even in the comment section. Please write them as we continue because someone might just be blessed by what you're typing down there. Amen. 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 So also when saints begin to have true passion for lost souls, Acts chapter 8 verse number 4 Acts chapter 8 and verse number 4 mm. and then read therefore they that were scattered abroad mm. went everywhere preaching the word mm-hmm. mm. you remember that's what we dealt with yesterday yes. uh, where we were talking with Mr. Jeff about um, when the persecution came in Jerusalem and everybody scattered and then the apostles remained and they continued preaching and Philip rose yes. and they began to preach with power until Simon the Susara can say, I want this power. True. So that's the power now we say, we're now we're saying that it is when people have a serious passion for lost and perishing souls. Mm-hmm. Amidst the chaos and the wars and everything, we don't want to see anybody dying. We don't want to see anybody losing. Mm-hmm. We, are, we are constantly fighting for their souls and their lives. We will preach to them. You go to them. Yeah. You knock their doors. Uh, they are so persistent. They are persistent. You know, of course, <laughs> they I know they are I are good. Yeah. Yeah. because it, it, there is a passion for it. Nobody is pushing you to do it. True. You just feel you want to witness. You want to evangelize. And we are praying for everybody who is really trusting God for a revival in their lives. Amen. May the passion for souls come back. Amen. You know, Deacon, one Amen. of the things I've learned, Nicole, but when we have a passion for souls, I'll put up a room for it. Yeah. Wasala wanga na makali na machungu na watu kwa sababu kuna chuki. Hakuna hakuna passion ya souls. Because how can you evangelize when you're bitter with people? You cannot. You can't. You can't. So you see because out of the heart, mm. out of the abundance of, of the heart, heart, the mouth speaks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you see it's it's something that the 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 love that was in 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 in, in Galatia, in Ephesus, in the early churches where Paul and Plant Makanisa so that at no given point will someone have any grudge whatsoever, any bitterness whatsoever with anybody. Because they know 
you can't be passionate about souls and then have bitterness with the same souls. Yeah. So, so it is the restoration of when saints begin to have a true passion for the lost souls. Then also you can look at another definition, which is the restoration of lost power. Um, in Luke chapter 10, yes. and verse 19, uh -huh, uh -huh. that tells us, Behold, I give unto you power mm -hmm. to tread on serpents mm -hmm. and scorpions, mm -hmm. and over all the power of the enemy, mm -hmm. and nothing, nothing, nothing shall by any measure hurt you. Hurt you. Of restoration of lost power. We need power in this time. So today people can trade on scorpions and stuff. Oh, no, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Those ones of Dubai. Hey, hey, Norma, hey, Norma. Yeah. Norma. <laughs> today you step on any, in fact, very minute things are killing us mm -hmm. because we don't have that power. True. Imagine Akina, 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 Philip, Wahopa, time of persecution, Stephen and Mewawa, or Mimzika Twivi. Paul ame inuka huko, I mean Saul ame inuka huko, ana chinja watu kuchinja. And then ya kwa nyumba, ana kupiga watu madaga na kiendanga. But then these people are standing. But there is no power. Even Simon, the Sosara, who had convicted people in that region and believed in him, says now there is a greater power here. Yeah, now so that true. power is what, when revival hits, that power is restored back to us. True. That power that you don't need to convince people. God himself does the conviction. True. You know, my dad always tells me that, you can only preach or teach, but only God can do the conviction. Amen. And that glory, that power that comes with that is in seeking God. So revival is when there is a restoration of lost power. Amen. The power that says, I give you power. You shall trample on snakes and scorpions. That glory, yeah. that they will not harm you. Amen. You will drink of bitter waters. They will not even harm you. You will tread in places where it is a hostile for the word of God, but nothing will be done to you because you are engulfed by the glory of God. You Amen. are protected, you are covered. Amen. That lost power. And we are praying, may that power come back to you. Amen. May that lost power come back to you. Amen. That lost power, that power that you had for prayer, that power you had for intercession, that power you had for the love of the things of God, may that power be restored back to you Amen. in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Right. Any other uh, scripture may have? Uh, we can read. In the book of Psalms, mm -hmm. chapter 80 mm -hmm. and verse 7. Mm -hmm. Restore us, mm -hmm. O God of hosts. Mm -hmm. Let your face shine mm -hmm. that we may be saved. I'll read that again. Mm -hmm. Restore us, mm -hmm. O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Amen. Some passions say, Restore us, O God, that we may rejoice. Or we may be saved. So it is actually a restoration of lost power. When God restores us, we are saved. Salvation is not works of men, it is the power of God unto you, Amen. humankind, the grace of God unto humankind. So when, when you walk in a time of revival, God restores you Amen. and you are saved. You rejoice, you enjoy that walk with God. You may also read the book of Luke chapter 10, uh, verse number 19. Uh, Luke chapter 10, verse number 19. Uh, let us go there very quickly. Luke chapter 10, verses number 19. The Bible says, um, Behold, I give you unto power, power which, you, uh, which you read actually, to trample on snakes and scorpion, none will harm you. Now, also the Bible is a spiritual reawakening. Reawakening and setting the soul on fire for God, which you talked about. Yeah. Uh, it's in 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 4, and Zechariah chapter 8, verse 21. You talked about it. We don't need to go back into that. Mm -hmm. Revival is also to fall in love with Jesus afresh. When you got born again, the very first time you got born again, when you go and you are church as buoy, you are going to go to church as you are going to go to church as you Those days, Grace is going to go to church as you <laughs> no, what happened? Complacency, a fresh love with Jesus brings about revival. Loving Him afresh brings about revival. Amen. Yeah. Uh, we can go to Psalms. Read for me Psalms. Chapter Psalms six. seventy-four. Yeah. yeah. Verse one to three. Mm. O oh God, mm. why hast Thou cast us off? forever. Mm. Why 
does thy anger smoke against the sheep of thy pastors? Mm. Remember your congregation, mm. which you have purchased of old, mm. the rod of your inheritance, which you have redeemed. This Mount Zion, wherein you have dwelt. Mm. Verse 3 Lift up your feet unto the perpetual desolation, mm. even all that the enemy had done wickedly mm. in the sanctuary. Wow. So revival is the agonizing realization for and the restoration of God's presence that was lost. Amen. That in Zion, the power in the potter, Kanisani, power in the That nowadays people are led by programs. <laughs> yes. Kipita hapo. Was on a viewer. Time. Watch time. Watch time. Watch time. It. When we, we come back to a place of the restoration of God's presence, in fact, there's a sermon I've just been building up, and I'll preach it one of these five days on the power of the presence of God from the book of uh, from the book of of Joshua. The power of the presence of God when when they're transitioning from the wilderness to the promised land. The power. There is something about the restoration of God's presence that when we get back to that place everything goes back to Eden where it's about God providing but you tending after God's work where it's about seeking first the kingdom of God is righteousness and everything else follows you not that you follow things and then God later because now what some of the things that make you able to tarry is that we are now Seeking things and then God later. Ukiangalia kama ni my pastors now, they are seeking numbers and not souls. Ukiangalia wasani, they are seeking to be the brands but not to be ministers. So the effectiveness is that now it has been reduced to things in the vice versa. Today, when someone stands in the matatu to preach, the first thing comes to the mind of people and that a person. But the same same people give offerings in church. <laughs> they give offerings and tithes in church. But when someone is teaching them in the, in the matatu, they rather plug in their earphones and listen to music. There are even branded posters, no preaching. No preaching, no, yeah, you know, hawking and all these things. Which, which shows us the, the, the level of morality where it has gone to. We are in a very sad state. Very sad. So we are praying that God's presence may be restored according to Psalm 74 verse 1 to 3. Now, as we also go down there, we begin to realize something. True revival is when the living God powerfully breaks into human history with the good news of salvation. So true revival begins with God's people coming under deep conviction of sin and turning from that sin in genuine repentance. True. Revival always involves a recovery of biblical truth. Remember yesterday we talked about doctrine. Biblical truth, especially the truth about how sinners are reconciled to a holy God. Amen. How we are reconciled to a holy God. Amen. The imperfect man coming in terms with the perfect God Amen. and taking the nature of God. So. Revival comes in when there is the right doctrine, when there is the right teaching. Mm -hmm. Where is all about how much I have, yeah. what I drive, where I live, yes. how many na 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 members I have. It's now about how many souls does God have? How many people do have, by the grace of God, have I led to the kingdom of God? And I am there also. Paul Akasema, follow me as I follow Christ. Christ. So as I'm bringing people to the kingdom, Am I also in the same kingdom? <laughs> or is it just ending with me? Yes. So now, we, we come to a place of what and that true revival involves a recovery of the centrality and authority of God's word over all of life. Where God's word becomes the central part of our life. If I wake up in the morning, have I worshipped God? Have I thanked God for the night? If, if I'm walking in the streets, am I thinking about the things of God? The things that are pure, the things that are just, the things that are holy, the things that are righteous, think about those things. 
am I constantly thinking about those things? And this does not negate the fact that I did work a while. Please go for cause of the career rent, because I could give you food. No. You see, if you come alone, you are on a shift. Sasa, to na kula neno, to na muka neno, to na kwa. Si ba ya ni poa. But apo the religion in Gilead na sana. Religion in Gilead apo. It's a very sublime thing. Religion comes in there and it makes you feel. Usi peleka watu ituwa juu na juu na kam. No, there's a there's a, a, a famous church in Kenya here where the, the 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 members were told don't take your kids to school mm-hmm. because to hospitals yeah. even to hospitals because Jesus is coming back mm-hmm. now that is heretical very, very that's heretical yeah. the bible says we get wisdom we get knowledge mm-hmm. so it's a place where now the recovery of the centrality and the authority of God's word when i'm sick before even i go to the hospital what's what's what God's word saying by your stripes i am healed Doctor Street, but God healed. So as I'm going to OC, Father, you have healed me. Yes. So let the donors confirm. Ah, who me pon? Then your faith in the Word of God grows. Amen. Amen. So it also brings a sense of God's presence, power, holiness, and truth. Then inevitably spills out of the church into the world, yeah. resulting in many conversions. Amen. Acts chapter 11 verse 21 Acts chapter 11 and verses 21 mm-hmm. I believe our viewers you have the Bible mm-hmm. and I'll read and the hand of the Lord was with them mm-hmm. and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord a great number believed and turned unto the Lord because the hand of God mm-hmm. was upon them we pray for everybody watching may the hand of God be upon you Amen. That every place you go, any person you meet, may they turn unto God because your life is a testimony. Amen. Somebody type, this is me, I receive it. This is me, this is me. Hallelujah. Amen. And going down to verse 22, mm-hmm. it says, Then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church mm-hmm. which was in Jerusalem, mm-hmm. and they sent forth Barnabas mm-hmm. that he should go as far as Antioch. Mm-hmm. Verse 23, when, who, when he came, mm. had seen the grace of God, mm. was glad and exhorted them all, mm. that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. Wow. Our last verse, but which is 24. Which is 24. Mm. For he was a good man mm. and full of the Holy Ghost. Full of the Holy Ghost. And of faith. Mm-hmm. And much people was added unto the Lord. Wow. The church, remember it is in Jerusalem when the church began in the upper room. The upper room. Then persecution came. Yes. And Philip went out yeah. and people scattered abroad. Yes. Now we're going even up to Antioch now. The, the fire. The fire is, the revival fire is heating. Yes. And the church is growing, is spreading. That is what we need. Yeah. To a point where now, it's no longer about us being comfortable in our suit and our collars like you know what you go and bring people no 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 it's about how many people are being reached out there so this is now what we talk about the, the the sense of god's power god's presence holiness truth when it speaks out from the church to the world we are converting them the danger today deacon nikwamba the world has come to the church You remember in church on Sunday I was rebuking people in a good way. A father they love. True. Don't come to church dressed up in trousers and you are, you know, all everything is out there. You are you are dressed in very skimpy clothes zimekufinya paka mbavu tunaziona. You know. Ladies umeva tights. And you guys are going to church ni kama hata uskini kama kuna shida. This is come to go the way one. No. <laughs> The, the the context you know people people the bible says people will water down the world to feed their deceitful desires and that's the data we are seeing today the, the the early church when when people kept just dressed skimpy the elderly women would go and cover them with with, with lessons today you tell them don't do this so you cover them with the lessons the next Sunday they don't come to church 
yes the last days people know the door sound, sound doctrine yes you it's know happening. it's happening yeah. the, the great falling away is here the apostles is here yeah. and you see that's why we have to go back to we, that's why we need a revival True. these are some of the things that make you able to tie yeah. and and you see the pain of this is that where there is no truth jesus is not there yeah. the bible says is the way the truth and the life, and the life. Yeah. so where there is no truth Jesus is not there because Jesus was a truthful person. He mm-hmm. is still a truthful person up to now. Up to now. Yeah. He changes not. The church is 2000 plus years old today. More than we are. More than we are. Mm-hmm. We found it here. We will leave it here. Yeah. But now the issue is what will we pass down to our children? Will we pass down an offended gospel or will we pass down the truth of the word? Today we are raising our young daughters and we are teaching them to dress in jeans and tight going to church. How will they now if 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 right now we are teaching our children to dress in tight and jeans and all these things going to church, what will they teach us their, their kids to go to church with? To be even worse. Are you seeing the picture? Yeah. They'll be naked in church and they will be like our fathers gave told us come as you are. Yeah. He does not look at your whatever your appearance look at your at the heart. <laughs> But see the same Bible says in the book of Proverbs that God your heart above all this because out of the heart are the matters of life so how you dress is a matter of the heart the heart so wala na na chat na my jeans na my tights na my whatever it's just a, a good rebuke from the word of god we look at that in, in depth maybe tomorrow that you see dress well with going to church there is no why so jeans is up okay and out no one will will fight you You see expect when the out come we have skirt. Alafu una una hike mountain au una panda mlima. Una va hills no. Every occasion it doesn't harm just dress appropriately. So lastly we will say this revival is about God's name being exalted and more praise and honor given to him on earth. Revival is the manifestation of God's awesome power against his enemies and against the enemies of his church amen apo to go acts apo to go acts chapter 12 verse 23 and 24 pale kitu kimalizi our viewers acts chapter 12 verses 23 and verse 24 mm. and immediately mm-hmm. the angel of the lord smote him mm-hmm. Be- because he gave not god his glory mm. and he was eaten of worms mm. and eaten up the ghost mm. and gave up the ghost mm. but the word of god grew and multiplied the word see if you become an enemy of revival takulwa na worms this is in prescription is the word you see there are people who have slept or died because of fighting god Paul akambia kina Gamaliel, sisi Paul sababu anakambia kina Gamaliel. Some I think. I don't know, I can't remember. That if you continue fighting these people, you will you will find yourself fighting God himself. If this is of God, it will stand. But if it is not of God, it will amount to nothing. When you see people are crying and kneeling down and wailing and crying to God for some where two or three are gathered crying to God. Please don't don't be an enemy to them. God is there. And God is jealous about his presence. Amen. Any interference, he will cause a worm to eat that one who is a stumbling block. But the church will grow. That's why I tell people and I tell my fellow pastors, we don't own people. God owns people. So, if if you have preached to somebody and they don't want to listen to you and they leave, don't curse them. Let them go to a place where they can do what they can hear yes. let them go to a place where they can hear the way they can receive and be be comfortable because for you probably god will send someone who also can listen to listen to you Amen. don't force people to to, to listen to you yes. don't force people don't don't coach people to hate other people that is not kingdom that is demonic na kama kuna mzana wote hapa na coaching watu kuchukia watu wengine wewe uko na mapepo mingi sana may god deliver you Hallelujah. Amen. So we are finishing by saying revival power kills all forms of fear and restores man's confidence in God and his sovereign power to save to the utmost. Amen. 
na give an assignment go home and read acts chapter as you are home open up ebu type hapo kwa comment section someone type for us put it up acts chapter 4 verse 29 to 31 put paste that scripture up on the comment section let us see i want to read from the comment section uh yeah i want to read from the comment section please i want to read that from the comment section acts chapter 4 mm-hmm. 21 someone uh, i'm waiting for them to post it uh-huh. acts chapter 4 29 all, all down to 31. Eh, yeah. ndo me post. Mm-hmm. All right. Jeff on uh, Jeff on post. Okay. Right. In some Acts chapter 4 and verses 29 to 31 mm-hmm. says And now Lord, mm-hmm. behold their threatenings and grant upon sorry, I'll start again. 29 mm-hmm. and now lord behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they, they may speak, speak thy, thy word, word. Mm-hmm. 30 by stretching forth thine hand to, to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of the holy child jesus mm. amen 31 and when they had prayed they the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the holy ghost and they spoke the word of god with boldness hallelujah hallelujah amen hallelujah very powerful so this restores man's confidence in god and in his sovereign power to save to the utmost hallelujah, hallelujah. we have just dealt with definitions introduction introduction it is very wide this topic of revival yeah it is very deep. It's, it's deep and wide yeah. but if you open up your heart to to, to study mm-hmm. even after this live stream is over mm-hmm. go back and start listening to this over and over mm-hmm. there is something that will enter into your spirit mm-hmm. and you want to be in the same so tomorrow we're going to be dealing with what happens when revival takes place amen Powerful. now that we know what revival is yes. what happens when revival takes place hallelujah yani hiyo kwanza usikose tomorrow tomorrow what happens when revival takes place it shall be powerful god bless you be a blessed this ministry you can send your offering your tithe as the lord leads you to support this ministry our numbers are right there on the screen go ahead and be a blessing to us and join us in church every other sunday at central park hotel shaker road street our numbers on the screen call us If you have any prayer request call us somebody is waiting to pray with you right now yes. Here is a step-by-step guideline on how to make safe and secure online partnerships, offerings, tithes and donations to Full Armor Fellowship Church Nairobi Kenya from any country around the globe through your laptop, computer, your cell phone or any device of your choice. Let's begin. The first step will be to open your browser and type in www.fofkenya.org. This will lead you to Full Armor Fellowship homepage. Click on Partner with us and find various options available on the website from bank details. PayPal, M-Pesa, MoneyWave, World Remit, SimbaPay among many others. If you are donating via PayPal, use the email stevedx@live.com and it will reroute you to Full Armor Fellowship Church PayPal homepage. Enter the amount and confirm. If you are using your credit card, fill in the details and confirm as well. To give via bank kindly wire to Sumac Microfinance Bank. Account number 10030220000543. Koenange Street, Nairobi, Kenya. Upon receiving your donation, we will mail you a receipt acknowledging your donations. Lastly to give via mobile money. M-Pesa. 
send to till number 5852381. For Money Wave, Remit, Simba Pay or Mpesa wire to plus 2547980536610, Grace. Thank you for supporting God's work. We decree blessings over you. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Dash 2 Corinthians 9 7.